Just a couple of questions about the NDIS. Um, what do you think has been the role of actuaries in um, setting up the NDIS and in the future? Uh, well, the role of actuaries has been very significant. Um, I, I've mentioned in my talk John Walsh on several occasions. Uh, John Walsh has been engaged in this from the beginning mm -hmm. in 2008 with the Disability Investment Group and he has a strong history in um, the reform of injury compensation systems leading up. He was a productivity commissioner in 2009 uh, and has been and is now engaged in the governance of the uh, of the NDIS. So he is very strong. The, the scheme is based on actuarial principles. I related those back to social insurance principles in my talk. Um, part of that has been that there should be a scheme actuary that Sarah Johnson is uh, filling the role of. And I think it's very important to look at the progressively at the emergence of costs and claim rates and to make policy decisions and get into that actuarial cycle that you uh, modify progressively as you go along uh, to try to keep a handle on the costs. This is an entitlement scheme and to keep a handle on the costs is going to be really important as that develops to make sure the scheme is fully rolled out. Thank you. Um, so we're, we're in the early days, we've, we've had seen a few trials but we haven't seen the full rollout of NDIS in Australia and um, you know we have an international audience here at the uh, colloquia and I wondered if you thought there were any early lessons that we've learnt through this experience that might be useful internationally? Um, I think it's probably too early to start to lecture other countries on what's, <laughs> yes. what's happening. We're learning ourselves I yes. think as we go along and the trial sites have focused on different issues, so some have focused on children, um, there have been different different um, focuses, some on rural areas and so on. Um, so I think we're in the early days of the learning. Um, to me the issue is about how do you assess people in, in a way, when you've got an entitlement scheme for reasonable and necessary supports, what does that mean and how do you do that within a fiscally responsible envelope? And that, that is a really interesting issue. Uh, it's been addressed through the development of reference packages. I don't think we know enough yet about reference packages and how they've been developed. And also the use of the assessment tool that the World Health Organization has developed uh, 15 years ago, HUDAS2. Uh, I think the use of tools like that is very important. So that essentially the scheme managers get a handle on how much they're going to pay for an individual and then the individual works out how they're going to spend that money. Yeah. The idea of them layering support on support before the amount is determined seems to me fraught with risk. Yes. Um, so it, it's not that clear from the reports but you can see there's been a big focus on trying to get a handle on, on the way those costs develop. The other, the other side of cost is the claim rates. Uh, I was just asked a question about the, the chance of the uh, scope expanding. We have yet to see how the scheme plays out with mental health in particular, um, but there'll be a lot of people who are in great need seeing the NDIS as a solution to their support needs and who will be trying to get in at the edges. And uh, that will be a, a, a difficult issue um, I, I'm, not, I'm not in any way opposed to people with psychiatric disability being included, yeah. but they have traditionally been dealt with very badly by uh, existing systems.